to beat Slate, uh, Jake. He wants to maintain his North American title. Aims and fires that boot into that cut open head of Jake. Now fight Jake is still there. We've had a tremendous night of action here. We will again have a super card, a holiday card when, Col when Houston Wrestling returns to the Coliseum on Friday, February 14th. But right now, our attention's focused on Slater as he sees that opening, the laceration on Jake the Snake. Good close-up shot of Jake looking for a moment of rest, a moment to try to recuperate, but Slater is smart enough to realize that he's got Jake literally on the rope. Slater doesn't want to make, wants to make sure that Jake doesn't come back. Look at Slater, listen to these fans as they start to see Jake showing some signs of coming back. It's a give and take as Jake determined to win the North American title is not about to give in to Slater's vicious attack. This is Slater at his vicious best, following up. He's on top, we've got one, we've got two, and we almost had the match. We almost had the match as Dick Slater almost pinned Jake the Snake Roberts, who's hurt right at this five minute mark. North American title match, one fall, 60 minute time limit, no disqualifications, no dark journey here at ringside. Slater, again on top, again only two as we have seen through the months that it takes a lot more than that to keep Jake the Snake's shoulders to the mat. He has come too far. He has traveled. He has gone through too much hardship to, in his quest for the North American title to give up now. Slater using that tape to choke Jake. Keep in mind there's no disqualifications. Tommy Gilbert doing his best to physically stop the choke as Jake continues to be on the receiving end of a vicious attack by Slater, who was able to cut Jake open by ramming his head into the metal ring post early in the match. Since that opening up his head, he has been after Jake. But Jake uses that boot. No disqualifications, Jake probably figures, why not? Now it's Slater on retreat. As Jake the Snake shows the boot in this crowd, chance to give it to him. A tremendous uproar. Jake has used that boot before and in a no disqualification match, it can happen. DDT, DDT, taken as the fans chant. Jake trying to recuperate on a Kurt Slater. Slater still dazed but old boot to the head. Tommy Gilbert doing his best to inform both men of the count. Slater into the rope, it's Jake with the clothesline. Fans are standing on their feet to chant DDT from the top row of the Coliseum all the way down the ringside and then up the other side. DDT, that's the hole they want to see. Jake setting up for it, he goes for it, but Slater was able to lift Jake up high above his head. Jake was going for the DDT, the hold that the fans here believe can win him the North American title. Slater is aware of the devastating ability of the DDT. And he was able to lift Jake high above his head. Slater now on top, on the top rope, aims and lands with that elbow. That elbow landed squarely in between the eyes of Jake the Snake. Both men cut open bad. As this has been as, as tough a battle as we expected. The fans expected a tough battle and they're seeing it. Jake, within a split second of losing this match, able to get that boot on the bottom rope. Referee Tommy Gilbert caught it just in time. Now an atomic drop by the Snake. As Slater thought he had the match. Prematurely, he thought he had the match. Jake now takes off his boot. Fans in the Coliseum are solidly behind him. They want to see an upset. They want to see our new North American heavyweight champion, Jake the Man, and the DDT landed. The DDT landed, and listen to this crowd. Jake's 
right now. We've got one. We've got two. We've got a new South American heavyweight champion. Jake the Snake has won a new the North American heavyweight title. We have a new North American heavyweight champion. Jake the Snake has won the belt. He has defeated Dick Slater. And this crowd here in the costume is going crazy. Jake the Snake won it with his DDT. The DDT landed. And Jake the Snake is a new North American heavyweight champion. That's this crowd. DDT. DDT. They love Jake the Snake, and they love what they just saw. Big, big upset. Jake the Snake, the new North American Heavyweight Champion. We'll be back with more Houston Wrestling action in just one moment. You know, ladies and gentlemen, one of the most controversial situations that we have ever been faced with in the Mid-South is the current status of the North American Heavyweight title. The North American Heavyweight Championship belt is vacant at this time, and on Valentine's night at the Sam Houston Coliseum, the championship will be decided. For this match, the DDT will be legal. There will be no disqualifications. And if, if Dark Journey comes to the ring, she will be thoroughly searched. Of course, Jake the Snake Roberts with his DDT legal will go against Dick Slater. And we'll hear from Jake the Snake in a few moments. But right now, let's hear this from Mr. Unpredictable. Go again, Jake Roberts. <laughs> and I got to laugh, and yet I got to cry. First of all, right back in the notice qualification match with a stipulation that Dark Journey is out with me, she's got to be searched. Well, you've already DDT'd her, and you told everybody that you wouldn't use a DDT against Dick Slater, and that's the reason why I have got the title held up by law. There's laws in this land, Jake Roberts, and you ought to try to learn about them. When you say one thing and do another, well, it doesn't go my way, Jake Roberts, but now, no disqualification. The title's been held up. The DDT's legal. Well, see, Jake Roberts, I know now where to look for the DDT. I didn't before because you said you weren't going to use it. But now, Jake Roberts, I've got my keen sense about your DDT, and you stay away from Journey, and me and you will settle this thing once and for all. Remember now, the DDT will be legal, and if Dark Journey comes to ringside, she's going to be searched. The man with the DDT, Jake the Snake Roberts, is really on a roll. And a lot of people think he deserves the Mid-South Tag, the North American title. Let's hear this. I have never liked lawyers. You spent your money on just like my ex-wife spent money on them. That's when I started disliking them, because they cost me something because you're not man enough to stand face to face and said, I can take it from you. You gotta go get some man with a nice little three-piece suit that spent his time in college, that's had the easy way out, and now you're taking the easy way out, Slater. Oh yeah, you're right. I did say I wouldn't use the DDT if Journey wasn't there. Well, she wasn't, and I did. So maybe I stand to be corrected, but not by a lawyer. Why don't you stand up and do it? The stipulation is this. When you look through all the bureaucratic crap, the stipulation is this. If she shows up at ringside, she's to be searched. And I will use a DDT. And as far as last time goes, you know, a lot of people come to me and say, Now, Snake, did you know it was her? Of course I did. And I'll do it again, Slater. Anything for the North American title. Along with Jim Ross, I'll be commentating the action that you'll see in this terrific hour. Stay with us because it will be a great hour. 
just before the opening, you were watching scenes from Coco Ware's video, The Bird. We'll be seeing Coco Ware in action later on in this hour. Also, we'll see the Sheep Herders. Buzz Sawyer goes against Al Perez in a special challenge match, and Jake the Snake Roberts will be putting the TV title on the line. Also, Dr. Death Steve Williams will be receiving a special award. And right now, at this time, let's go to Jim Ross, who's standing by in the ring to uh, conduct a special interview. Ladies and gentlemen, Sir Oliver Humperdinck at this time would like to make a statement about the man that you see in the ring. As you know, Jim Ross, and as everybody around the Mid-South knows, for the last three or four months I've had a lot of trouble here. Trouble with guys like Jake the Snake, Hacksaw Duggan, and the rest of them. I know the people are happy about it, but I'm not too happy about it. I've lost a lot of good men. They've fallen away along the wayside due to injuries and that. But scouring the earth, as I always do, for suitable people for the House of Humperdinck, I've finally come up with what I'm calling the Great Equalizer. I've searched everywhere, and in the outreaches of Mongolia, I have found the gentleman you see with me today in the ring, Tyrus Bulba, the meanest, most devastating individual ever to come out of outer Mongolia. Now I know everybody has heard people say this guy's the toughest, that guy's the toughest, but you being an excellent judge of wrestling flesh, Seeing everybody in the world at one time or another, I just wish that you would stay with me during this match at ringside. Be my guest. Take a look at this man, and then after the match is over, I'm going to ask you a couple questions as to whether or not this is the finest piece of wrestling talent anybody in the world has ever discovered. So I'm ready to unveil to the people of the Mid-South right now my newest sensation, Harris Bulba. And ladies and gentlemen, Terrace Bulbo's opponent in the blue corner at 240 pounds from Texarkana, Arkansas. Please welcome Perry Jackson. This match, one fall with a 10 minute time limit. Your referee is Carl Fergie. <laughs> Perry Jackson. Terrace quick to the attack. Terrace Bulba, a man with a low center of gravity. Very stocky, powerful man. Humperdinck says that he's found this man from Mongolia. Humperdinck has found several great wrestlers and of course He's known worldwide for his reputation as being a fantastic manager. Terry Jackson fighting back, lashing out against the midsection of Terrace Bulba, but Bulba with some hard forearm smashes over the back. Now he was hitting right around the chest and lung area, and that'll drive the wind right out of you. A hard clothesline. You'd hear that pop all the way across the arena. Bulba with some very well-placed knees to the head. Man, but he sets up for the pile driver. A reverse pile driver. Lateral press. Terrace Bulba makes quick work of Perry Jackson. Uh, Sir Oliver Humperdinck said that he would like to have a few words with Jim Ross after the match. Jim has entered the ring. Uh, just like I told you a little bit earlier, Ross, you've got to agree with me, and the fans of Mid-South have got to agree that this is the most awesome individual ever. And now, I'm about to unveil my three-fold plan to rid the Mid-South of the likes of Jake the Snake Roberts and Jim Hacksaw Duggan. First of all, the Mongolian is here to take care of people like Perry Jackson. And second of all, he's here to do... Hold it, hold it, hold it. Second of all, Sir Oliver, is this. <laughs> I can't believe this. Terrence Bulba has attacked Sir Oliver Humperdinck. What's going on here? It looks like Eddie Gilbert is behind this. He's not doing anything to Humperdinck. He sends you that reverse pile driver. One whole year. One whole year. He is waited.
What's the one year? What do you mean one year? One whole year I waited, Jim Ross. This man came to Mid South after I made the nightmare of the North American heavyweight champion. He told me that I could get lost. Well, I was growing up, boy. My daddy told me, "Don't get mad, get even," and I have, and I've got Torres Bubba. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be back with more exciting Mid South wrestling right after this from the network. Along with Dark Journey in the ring, there's a lot of controversy at this point in time surrounding not only the North American Championship, but the Television Championship, but more importantly, when Jake the Snake Roberts ddt Dark Journey. I want to ask her a couple of questions. I'm going to talk to her. Don't you sit here and insult me. And don't you sit there and insult me. I'm not trying to insult first anyone. All, I want to ask a couple of questions. First of all, the North American title will come my way. Second of all, the television title will come my way. Third of all, Jake Roberts should be kicked out of Mid-South for DDT and Journey. He has no business with his hands on her. And these people are driving me crazy. Let me tell you something right now. I deserve a lot more respect and so does Journey, then Mid-South has given both of us. Now Jake Roberts wants a piece of me, he knows where I am. He knows where I am. And as for the television title, Jake Roberts, you put your name on a dotted line, and Dick Slater will take the television title right along with the North American title. Ladies and gentlemen, this match, one fall with a 10 minute time limit, Introducing first in the red corner at 235 pounds from Tampa, Florida, accompanied by Dark Journey, Mr. Unpredictable, Dick Slater. His opponent in the blue corner at 227 pounds from Pensacola, Florida, Ricky Gibson. This match one fall with a 10 minute time limit. Your referee is Tommy Gilbert. One fall with a 10 minute time limit. It's gonna be a great match. Ricky Gibson against Dick Slater. Mr. Unpredictable ties up with Ricky Gibson. It should be a good scientific battle. Both these men are extremely good technical wrestlers, as we all know. And just before the match, I noticed that Dick Slater was uh, giving Dark Journey a little bit of extra help as she was getting out of the ring. She, of course, wearing a neck brace after being ddt by Jake the Snake Roberts. Dick Slater trying to get his way out of the leg scissors. He gets to his feet. Tommy Gilbert just, <laughs> just about got run over by Slater. I'm telling you, when you're inside that ring, it's a lot smaller than it seems. I've refereed several matches. and if you don't get out of the way and watch yourself all the, at all times, you can flat get wiped out. Ricky Gibson goes back to that leg scissors. Ricky's a master at leg holds. Slater trying to maneuver his way out of it. An attempt, but Ricky keeps it locked up. Ricky, there's kind of a half pile driver type move, but I don't think... Uh, but he quite had the distance to really get a lot of momentum into it. Slater breaks free, but Ricky Gibson's holding his head. This could be a disadvantageous position for Ricky. Slater with a headbutt. I've seen Slater use that move many times before successfully, that headbutt when he's in there tight. That's a good move. But Ricky Gibson reverses it and gets back into the leg scissors. Great move on Gibson's part. Stay with us, because coming up, we've got Al Perez against Mad Dog Buzz Sawyer in a special challenge bout. Perez, of course, challenging Sawyer, and Sawyer is up to it. We saw him last week here on Mid-South after Al Perez was demonstrating his belly-to-back suit play on a dummy. Buzz Sawyer came out, 
put his two cents in. Basically, they challenged one another right there, but Sawyer, using a little bit of discretion, left the ring right then and there. Also see Coco Beware and the Sheep Herders, both of their debut here on Mid-South. Dick Slater with a reversal, and Ricky Gibson with a reversal. He goes back into the hammerlock. Now Gibson is showing us his strategy in this match here. He obviously has a game plan. He wants to keep Slater in tight and keep him tied up with a lot of holes. And frankly, I think that that's a fine strategy for Ricky to use against Dick Slater. Slater's a brawler. Arm bar and twist. Slater's up to a base now. At this point, he could be mobile. Oh, a hard knee lift to the midsection. Slater turns the tables. Quite a chop he hit Ricky Gibson with then. End of the ring, Slater looked like he was setting for a high vertical back suit play. Ricky Gibson goes to the ropes. But even though he got out of the suit play, he's still in a bad way because he's stuck in there against the ropes. And you don't always want to be in there. Oh, punishing elbow. Crowd's chanting for Ricky Gibson. Ricky's another one of those. There you see Dark Journey on the outside of the ring. That neck brace is there, but uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't count her out of involvement in a match. What a suplex by Slater and an unorthodox reversal on Gibson's part, but it worked. Are there anything you can do to get away from that three count? It could come off a quick. Oh, nice, nice reversal by Ricky Gibson. See a lot of great reversals this far in the match. Slater went for that pile driver. Hard forearm to the chin. Gibson went for it, but Dick Slater is such a quick thinker. That's why they call him Mr. Unpredictable. There again, he tries for the vertical back suplex, but he hits him with a front. Slater can turn the tables on you so, so fast. Lateral press, one, two, and three. Referee Tommy Gilbert makes a three count. Winner of the match, Mr. Unpredictable, Dick. Slater. Dick Slater, the winner of the match. Coming up next, we're going to have Al Perez against Mad Dog Buzz Sawyer in a special challenge. We'll be back right after these words from the Mid-South Wrestling Network. <laughs> Introducing first in the red corner, at 260 pounds from St. Petersburg, Florida, Mad Dog, Buzz Sawyer! Buzz Sawyer's opponent scheduled to be Al Perez. We understand we, uh, he's had airline problems. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. Where's the tent? Come on, Perez! I'll stab him around like a wee Al, Al Perez was scheduled to wrestle Mad Dog Buzz Sawyer. He has had transportation problems. Buzz Sawyer out here barking around, 
and he run Hacksaw Jim Duggan out of his home, out of Mid-South. Well, let me tell you something, Sawyer. There's not a man on the face of this earth that's going to run me out of Mid-South, especially, especially you. You come out here with your chain. Well, okay, you want to break rules? Hacksaw Duggan, I can break rules too, Betty. And that's two, five, four. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be back with more right after this from the Mid-South Network. You know, Brez didn't have the guts. He didn't even show up. And what have I been doing? I've been beating myself with a chain. I've been getting ready for that two by four you're talking about. I want you to bring it because, yeah, that's right. I'm the mad dog. And I'm madder than you ever seen me or any human being watching me right now. You come on, you tough guy. You bring that two by four and you hit me with it and you beat me with it. And it's just gonna make me that much stronger. And then when I drop this chain across your teeth and you wake up the next morning and you can't even eat and you're spitting up and you're going crazy. You're mine, dude. You're mine. I've gotten your kind of match with the old dog collar. I thought I had things going my way. Made me feel pretty good. But you kind of pulled one of your fancy damn tricks and sent old Hacksaw Duggan to, to the old hospital for a little while to think about things. Count the holes in my ceiling. Well, I did a lot of counting and I did a lot of thinking. And it came down to one thing. No matter what else goes on, no matter what happens with my lady, no matter what happens to my family, no matter what happens to my car, this is between you and me, baby. So no matter what else goes on, it's just going to be you and me in the ring. And I don't care about a wrestling match. I don't care about rules. All I care about is you. And by God, tough guy, you're going to go down. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing first in the red corner from New York City, weighing 230 pounds, Broadway Joe Malcolm. Introducing from Union, Tennessee, 229 pounds, the Birdman, Coco Ware. Coco, beware. This match, one fall or 10 minute time limit. Coming to the ring, Morris Day's Bird bringing him to the ring. Quite a tremendous athlete from Union, Union City, Tennessee, Joe, going against Broadway, Joe Malcolm. He is a great athlete, that's for sure. Arm drag. Coco doing the bird there. Collar and elbow tie up. Coco Ware, as many of you know, is here in the Mid South a little over a year ago with uh, his partner Norvell Austin. They were pretty young things. Coco was quite successful in that tag team, and he's glad to be back in the Mid South. What a great guy. Perfectly executed hip toss by Coco Ware. A very powerfully built young man. Extremely quick. Great aptitude for wrestling. He is tough as nails. Talking with him before we went on the program, uh, we're on the air today. He's uh, really came up the hard way. He's earned everything he's ever got. And that's the way it is in the Mid-South. You earn it right here. By the way, Joe, with that headlock he has it locked in pretty tight hope you like our new mat cover 
here at the beautiful Tulsa Convention Center. Great crowd on hand. People in Tulsa have really rallied behind Mid-South. Coco Ware electrifying this crowd. Tornado man. Crowd kick. He nailed Broadway and Joe right on the kisser. Man, he got up there, Joe. He was right eye level with Broadway Joe Malcolm, and he's so explosive, this Coco Ware. Coco Beware, to be exact. Sure is. He's got very powerful legs, and brother, those drop kicks will flat lay on your back just like they did to Joe Malcolm just then. He was an all-state nose guard in, uh, in Tennessee in high school, Joe, by the way. Let's watch that drop kick again in slow motion if we can. Coco Ware applying that arm bar and twist. He's just about to get a fall there. Malcolm, one of his shoulders was down. Great officiating there by Tommy Gilbert. He's always, now here's that drop kick. Man, what impact. Full extension of the legs, perfectly executed by Coco Ware. Malcolm now trying to turn the table and he is doing so. Coco Ware will see his resiliency here. Malcolm throws him hard into the ropes, and Malcolm kind of methodical there. He moved in. Short forearms to the side of the head of Coco Ware. Coco goes to the second rope, and another drop kick, man, alive! Tommy Gilbert got it! He had to go! Coco Beware! Hey, he's got it! Coco Beware! He has all the tools, and there he is, shaking it around. We'll be back with more Mid-South Wrestling action. We'll see the Sheep Herders right after this. America! Ball in the blue corner. From Dallas, Texas, weighing 205 pounds, Steve Dahl. And from St. Petersburg, Florida, weighing 220 pounds, Brett Wayne Sawyer. And ladies and gentlemen, introducing in the red corner, the combined weight of 482 pounds, the New Zealand Sheep Herders. This match, one fall or 10 minute time limit. Well, ladies and gentlemen, there you hear the introductions and there you see one of the most devastating tag team combinations in professional wrestling today. They have won championships in 28 countries. They have been fined and suspended as much as any tag team in wrestling history. The New Zealand Sheep Herders, Luke Williams and Butch Miller and Joe, this is our first opportunity to see them here in live action on Mid-South Wrestling. I'm looking forward to seeing this wrestling machine because I really feel that's indeed what they are. Well, they're world renowned. They definitely have an international reputation, as you said, Jim, and they are going straight to the attack as, uh, as they most usually do. Butch Miller really pounding Steve Dahl. You won't see a team that any more methodical, any smoother as far as their teamwork is concerned than the New Zealand Sheep Herders. Luke Williams in the ring now against Steve Dahl. These men have very little regard for their own bodies. They have absolutely none for their opponents. They ask no quarter and most certainly will give none. Well, they're at a good point in their athletic careers because they're veterans of the ring, but they still have, they still have maturity and enough strength on their side that they can compete with just about any tag team anywhere. And they're so punishing and vicious. Like you said, they have such a high threshold of pain, they seem to thrive on it. And Joel, one other thing, they have controlled Steve Dahl from the outset, quite obviously, but they have kept him in the white and in the red. In other words, the mat covered their side of the ring for the balance of this contest. Steve Dahl has not entered the blue, his corner, since this match started. That's classic tag team strategy. Like I said before, these two men are veterans. They're going to take every, take full advantage of every tactical strategy that they possibly can as they set Steve Dahl up for a double. Double knee drop into the chest. The New Zealand Sheep Herders 
with a very decisive victory over the duo of Steve Dahl and Brett Wayne Sawyer. And Sawyer never appeared in the ring. He never was tagged. And they are so anti-American, so pro-New Zealand are these two men. And ladies and gentlemen, in just a few moments, we'll be back with you on Mid-South Wrestling and Jake Roberts will defend the television title right after we come back from this network timeout. You're looking at the toughest, roughest the tag team the world has ever known. You're looking at the most traveled tag team the world has ever known. The first time in our lives, 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 like, like it knocked down brick walls. That's right. And the New Zealand sheep birders are going after the titles. They're and whatever not. the New Zealand sheep birders go after, the like New Zealand sheep birders get. Corner, first of all, from Havana, Cuba, weighing 240 pounds, Gustavo Mendoza. From Atlanta, Georgia, weighing 250 pounds, the master of the DDT, Jake the Snake Roberts. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this match is for the Mid-South television title. One fall or television time remaining. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Mid-South Wrestling. Jim Ross and Joel Watts with you. Thank you very much for being with us. This match for the Mid-South Television title, the man of the DDT, Jake the Snake Roberts, going against the man from Havana, Cuba, Gustavo Mendoza. Collar and elbow tie-up. Great ovation for Jake the Snake Roberts. As I said before, a great crowd on hand here at the Tulsa Convention Center. People very enthusiastic. I, there's kind of an air of electricity in the town of Tulsa. People really get behind Mid-South Wrestling. They love the TV taping here. Gustavo Mendoza complaining of Jake the Snake's possible usage of the hair. Jake is a man who is not unfamiliar with that type of tactic. Oh, he certainly is. And I think he's probably as proficient uh, with those tactics as anything, but not as proficient as he is with his DDT. Overhand wrist lock. Mendoza now pulling the hair quite blatantly, and the referee was out of position. Mendoza moved him such. Looks like he pulled the tights there, Joel, to me. Mendoza knows that this is a this is the biggest match of Mendoza's career, or at least thus far since he's been in the Mid-South, for the television title. And when you're going for the television title on the number one wrestling program in the country, it makes it even more prestigious. We're not saying that out of our own ego. We're saying it statistically. All the Arbitron ratings support what we say as far as our show being number one. And we owe that to the fans at home. They make it such. Mendoza ties up Jake with a headlock. A right cross to the face of Jake. He can feel it. You know, Joel, I've seen Mendoza in some arenas around the Mid-South. He's double tough, but Jake Roberts turning the tide. Jake Roberts will control the momentum. And like 90% of the matches that you'll see him in, oh, he's gone. Mendoza barely blocked it and got out of the ring. He was moments away from the lights being turned out. He just about had his head rammed right into the mat. I'm sure he's got a drink the snake. I'm sure he knows that that DDT Probably one of the most punishing weapons in all of wrestling. Dick well, Murdoch, however, has been claiming lately that uh, that his brain buster could be even more dangerous than the DDT. I don't know. Both of them are extremely powerful. Of course, the situation between he and Slater is heating up. But look at this. Listen to the people chanting for Jake. 
the DDT. They don't want to see an armbar twist. They want to see the DDT. Jake going for it one more time. You know, if Jake has a fault, as far as the DDT is concerned, even though you can hit it from an instant, just, I mean, at an eyelash, you can have it. Sometimes he is a little blatant with, uh, depending on the DDT. Of course, I guess, you know, maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. When you got the DDT, what else do you need, really? Yeah, I think whenever a guy gets into a front face lock with Jake, they know uh, exactly what to look for. Mendoza with that headlock. Oh, another right cross to the head. Mendoza really popped him. And Jake the Snake again feels it. Mendoza's a powerful man. You can see by Jake the Snake's reaction that, that uh, he knows how to throw a punch. The man from Havana exhorting Jake Roberts to stand up. Another right hand found a home. Jake trying to shake the cobwebs there somewhat. Oh, Gustavo Mendoza going for the pin. Jake Roberts quickly kicks out. Jake Roberts has had some tremendous battles with Dick Slater. As you can see from our earlier interview, that situation is far from over really getting out of hand. Nice snap mare there, Joel, now with the rear chin lock. Jake Roberts, he really has the advantage over most athletes as far as his leverage is concerned. We spoke of Dick Murdoch earlier. We're going to see Murdoch in six-man tag action. Well, that's going to be tremendous, and it's coming up in just a few moments. I'm also going to be in a very special presentation I'm extremely pleased to participate in involving Steve Dr. Death Williams. Most certainly, a lot of great things coming up. Stay with us. Jake the Snake is really applying the pressure on the head of Gustavo Mendoza. As you can see, there's a lot of pain on the face of Mendoza. Jake, I guess, trying to wear down Mendoza, keep him on the mat. And, you know, even though Mendoza is laying down on his back in this instance, he's having to expend a lot of energy right now just to keep his shoulders up off the mat. Yeah, Jake is, Jake is putting the, that, uh, his left shoulder, using it as a pressure point as he executes the headlock there. Jake got up a little bit too high on him and lost his leverage there. That's something you won't see Jake the Snake do too often. Now you see him sinking his hips and his back down, putting the pressure on the spinal column of Mendoza. But Mendoza gets up to a base, and Jake the Snake takes him back into a hammerlock. Oh, man, that elbow really found a home. Jake, I think, at that instant, should have tried to keep Mendoza down on the mat. But, of course, Jake can't execute his DDT unless he gets Mendoza up from the base. So. You know, maybe Jake had a game plan in mind. Here we go! Oh, man! Oh, he really nailed it. He got it! They knocked him head over heels, and listen to this crowd. Jake the Snake getting a little bit cocky there. You better get that lateral press. Oh, yeah! Jake the Snake with the DDT and the victory. Look at this crowd! I'll tell you, Joel, he, he might have needed to get into a hurry, but I think he could have got out, one out, got in a box of popcorn and come back and cover the guy. <laughs> he <laughs> had it planted. He sure did. And Mendoza is still not moving around too gingerly. There's a young wrestling fan, a tremendous crowd here in Tulsa, Oklahoma. There you see the man with the DDT. Dick Slater, beware. And ladies and gentlemen, we've got one of the greatest six-man tag matches in the history of television. We'll have it for you in just a few moments right after this from the exciting Mid-South Wrestling Network. Laugh and yet I gotta cry. First of all, right back in the notice qualification match, with a stipulation that Dark Journey is out with me, she's got to be searched. Well, you've already DDT'd her, and you told everybody that you wouldn't use a DDT against Dick Slater, and that's the reason why I have got the title held up by law. There's laws in this land, Jake Roberts, and you ought to try to learn about them. When you say one thing and do another, 
Well, it doesn't go my way, Jake Roberts, but now, no disqualification. The title's been held up. The DDT's legal. Well, see, Jake Roberts, I know now where to look for the DDT. I didn't before because you said you weren't going to use it. But now, Jake Roberts, I've got my keen sense about your DDT, and you stay away from Journey, and me and you will settle this thing once and for all. Fight lawyers. You spent your money on just like my ex-wife spent money on them. That's when I started disliking them because they cost me something. Because you're not man enough to stand face to face and say, I can take it from you. You got to go get some man with a nice little three-piece suit that spent his time in college. It's had the easy way out. And now you're taking the easy way out, Slater. Oh, yeah, you're right. I did say I wouldn't use the DDT if Journey wasn't there. She wasn't, and I did. So maybe I stand to be corrected, but not by a lawyer. Why don't you stand up and do it? The stipulation is this. When you look through all the bureaucratic crap, the stipulation is this. If she shows up at ringside, she's to be searched. And I will use the DDT. And as far as last time goes, you know, a lot of people come to me and say, now, Snake, did you know it was her? Of course I did. And I'll do it again, Slater. Anything for the North American title. Man, tag team war. One fall or a 60-minute time limit. Your referee, Carl Fergie. To my right, this team consists of Mad Dog Buzz Slater. Superstar and Captain Redneck Dick Murdoch. Their opponents, the tag team from Oklahoma University, Steve Dr. Death Williams. His partner, the other half of the Mid South tag team title holder from Omaha, Nebraska. The Big Chief, Ted DiBiase. And making his return to Houston Wrestling from New York, New York, Hacksaw Jim Duggan. So there you have the introduction of this six-man tag war. The bell has not been sounded, but these six individuals didn't need any excuse to get the action started. There's no love lost between these six individuals. On one team, you heard it. Axel Jim Duggan, Ted DiBiase, and Steve Dr. Ed Williams. What an all-star team of rugged individuals. And on the other side, Bo, you've got Mad Dog Buzz Sawyer, Dick Murdoch, and the Superstar. Uh, you may be able to make some arguments on the sanity of that team that you see in your picture, but one argument you're going to lose if you argue that they aren't tough and rugged and dangerous because they have proven through the, their years in professional wrestling that they can literally destroy opponents as well as beat them. But Hacksaw Jim Duggan and Buzz Sawyer, they've got a feud running and they don't need any excuse to start picking up where they left off last time. And Buzz Sawyer went to the wrong corner. DiBiase didn't hit him, but Dr. Death sure did as the Mad Dog crawls back as Captain Redneck Dick Murdoch from Waxahachie, Texas, the man who has been a proud Texan, but I don't know how proud the state of Texas has been for Dick Murdoch's career. He's been up and down, but oh, one thing you've got to point in his favor, he has been everywhere and he has made people remember Dick Murdoch. He has held countless titles. He has main evented throughout the world. He has proudly displayed that Texas flag and that rugged style that he is now trying to coerce or just maybe try to slow down Hacksaw Jim Duggan. Murdoch is a crafty veteran. He was standing outside the ropes. He saw how fired up Duggan was. And so he decided if he was to step inside the ring with Hacksaw Jim Duggan, that he wanted to slow down the pace a little bit. That's got to be one of the first criteria is any opponent of Hacksaw Jim Duggan is you better slow down the pace because when Hacksaw Duggan explodes no place in that ring is safe Dick Murdoch now 
being challenged by the thousands upon thousands of fans here in the same Eastern Coliseum, the home of Eastern wrestling, an arena so rich and full of wrestling tradition, crowd wrestling tradition through the years. Some of the greatest wrestling matches in this country took place right here in the Coliseum. Now, Ted DiBiase, he wants Axel Jim Duggan to tag him because Ted DiBiase has a few scores to schedule with Jim, Dick Murdoch, who just a couple months ago, Dick Murdoch nearly put Ted DiBiase, one of wrestling's all-time greats, out of wrestling for good. And Ted DiBiase now encouraging Duggan to tag him, but Murdoch again extends that hand of friendship. The fans here in the Coliseum are trying to warn Duggan to not to trust the big blonde grappler over 325 pounds but you can tell Duggan is also big all six men are big and they are dangerous inside those ropes Murdoch not too happy with the response he's getting from the huge crowd here you can see the crowd now trying to warn Duggan don't shake hands with Murdoch they've seen Murdoch turn cold before including when he turned cold on Ted DiBiase and nearly sent the all-star grappler out of wrestling for good. Murdoch now pleading his case. He shows his hand of friendship. Duggan a little bit weary and because he's not only keeping in mind the reputation of Murdoch, but he's hearing the advice of thousands of wrestling fans who shout him not to shake hands with the big Texan. Axel Jim Duggan and Ted DiBiase. For years, they had a battle going on between the two of them. Uh, one of the roughest, toughest feuds you're ever going to see in professional wrestling. But this latest outburst by Dick Murdoch and the superstar, or you can call Murdoch's army of friends, the Captain Redneck is the general, has caused Ted DiBiase and Hacksaw Jim Duggan to bury the hatchet and to join forces. Because one thing, when you battle a person as long and as hard as these two men have battled, you grow to respect their toughness, and that's the kind of man you want in your corner. You want somebody who can give it out just as well as you can, but also somebody who can take it as well as you can. As Dick Murdoch shook hands, the handshake seemed to all go in order. Murdoch gave his gesture to Ted DiBiase, and the match now continues. Referee's position as both big men trying to jockey for leverage. Murdoch now, well, this is a little bit of surprise. Murdoch trying to calm down the Mad Dog. Now, Dick Murdoch whispers into Mad Dog's ear his strategy. Remember, he's Captain Redneck. He's the captain of this team. He has a definite plan. He is trying to slow down the pace of this match. Why, we may see later on in this showdown, but it's one fall with a 60-minute time limit which means all six men know that it all it takes is one slip up, one mistake, and they could lose the match. This match is, signifies the return of Hacksaw Jim Duggan to Houston as he's had a very successful tour around the world. And Murdoch now doing the crowding. Duggan up against the ropes. Well, we expected some kind of maneuver by Redneck, so did Duggan as Duggan looks a little bit baffled by the new Dick Murdoch he sees in the ring because he has witnessed and has heard about what has taken place the last couple of months in the Mid-South and Eastern Wrestling area. Now it's Duggan who has been crowded into turnbuckle again. Again, Dick Murdoch. This time, Murdoch went for what we expected the other times. He couldn't trick Duggan. Duggan kept his guard up as he, Dick Murdoch went for that big roundhouse right of his. Duggan was able to block it and use that forearm. So the strategy by Murdoch didn't work. Here comes the Mad Dog. Well, you can see one of the reasons why he is called the Mad Dog. That is not a nickname that he hasn't earned by wrestling fans and wrestlers alike but a guillotine drop with that elbow by Duggan and another one as the Mad Dog is one of the toughest individuals you're ever going to see I've seen him take punishment and punishment and refuse to stay down but that time that clothesline a maneuver that Duggan used to be penalized for in the NFL when he played for the Atlanta Falcons and also played for the SMU Mustangs 
in professional wrestling, much to his delight, he has found it's a move that he can use. So Murdoch now at DiBiase. And DiBiase's being held by the superstar. Now Dr. Death coming to the aid of DiBiase. And this is one of the things that can happen when you have a six-man tag. It usually does when all six men bust loose and one referee is not able to keep it under control. It's a superstar into the rope and a double clothesline by DiBiase and Duggan as they are in the ring waiting for their team, their opponents, to regroup. And the high fives or high tens in that man. And look at this huge crowd at the Coliseum. Another tremendous crowd at the Coliseum came out to see this six-man tag as Buzz Sawyer Murdoch superstar. They regrouped and they've come back in the ring and look at the look on Dick Murdoch's face. I mentioned before you may be, have a very good argument about the sanity of this team, but you may not be able to debate or challenge their toughness or their ability. But they do have a very unorthodox style, and this is what Ted DiBiase and Hacksaw Duggan and Steve Dr. Williams will have to contend with. When you talk about DiBiase, Duggan, and Dr. Death, you're talking about three individuals with solid football backgrounds. I mentioned the credentials of Hacksaw Jim Duggan before, but Ted DiBiase was also a football star, and you, all you have to do is look at the record books. It's, Oklahoma, and you see where Steve Dr. Death Williams played for the Oklahoma Sooners four years. He was an All-American. He is one of several athletes who have been able to make that adjustment from professional football to professional wrestling and do it well. They made the adjustment because they can make more money in professional wrestling and also become more of the individuals that they take pride in being. So Duggan now ripping across the eyes of Murdoch. He was using the object that Murdoch tried to use on him. This is Hacksaw Duggan and Ted DiBiase. They are normally not rule breakers, except if their opponents start to stretch the rules, they are more than willing to oblige and swing the match into a more roughhouse style. Murdoch worth airborne, and that's a big airplane to land. Murdoch now ripping across the eyes, which seems to be a favorite move of Murdoch, and now we for the first time in this match, see a look at the superstar as he tries to pick up where Murdoch left off. Well placed shoulder block. DiBiase setting him up and he caught him. He caught the superstar coming off that rope, uses momentum to send him flying and now Dr. Death is in the ring as the teamwork and the football ability of both men well displayed. Buzz Sawyer comes running in. Buzz Sawyer finds that they're waiting for him as DiBiase and Dr. Death now set up Dick Murdoch. Again, those two football shoulder tackles sends Murdoch toppling into the ropes. So the team of Dick Murdoch, Mad Dog Buzz Sawyer, and the Superstar finding the golding extremely tough in this match. A six-man tag war with a one-hour time limit, one fall, as Murdoch coming back up on the apron, we've got Steve Dockett Williams with a side headlock on the superstar. They are the two legal men in the ring. Dr. Death coming at you. As you saw the superstar trying to go for that move, Dr. Death couldn't stop his momentum, and but was able to slow down enough to stay on top of the superstar. Fergie down for one. But that's all because Dr. Death is just too big a man to keep down in that tight maneuver. The superstar realizes it as he comes back now trying to find a different way out of that side headlock. It's not too often in professional wrestling you see a six-man tag war because it's a dangerous match for wrestlers to engage in because it's a hard match to keep under control as we're watching Paul Fergie doing a good job of it. But you saw the Mad Dog high in the air. Look at Dr. Death now. That's a 250-pound-plus wrestler that Dr. Death is military pressing over his head. Not just once, and <laughs> a second time. And now he sends him crashing to the mat with that crotch hold and slam. A super demonstration of the raw strength of Steve Dr. Death Williams to be able to catch the Mad Dog and... Military pressed him over his head, not just once, but twice, before he sent the Mad Dog crashing to the mat. 
a strong upper body. Dr. Death has lost a few pounds since coming out of the football ranks. He felt that if he can trim down, he can use more of his natural speed and ability because he does have that speed and quickness. He's one of those gifted athletes that has power, ability, coordination, quickness, all those ingredients spell for a top-notch wrestler, which Dr. Death is, because right now, Steve, Dr. Death Williams, and Ted DiBiase are the current Mid-South Tag Team title holders. They are a popular team, a team that has quickly gone to the top of the wrestling tag team wars and has stayed on top. Mad Dog showing some of his ability to move around the ring, but that time, DiBiase ready. Cross body block. It was that kick by Murdoch that sent DiBiase off, and it's also those kicks that are keeping Ted DiBiase down long enough for the superstar. But Axel Jim Duggan, who doesn't mind coming into the ring to try to serve justice, we've got Murdoch using DiBiase's head against the ring. We've got the superstar and DiBiase in the ring. They are the two official combatants at this time. Driving elbow as the superstar showing why he was selected by Captain Redneck to be in his team. A drop across that top steel cable. Those are rubber-coated steel cables. Uh, when you can snap your opponent across the top, you can punish him. And now crotch hold as superstar trying to work over Ted DiBiase. Ted DiBiase is one of those wrestlers who wrestle around the wrestling world, held countless titles. His father was a professional wrestler, Iron Mike DiBiase. And unfortunately, Ted's father was one of the casualties of the wrestling world as he was killed in a wrestling ring. And Ted DiBiase, ever since he was a little boy, wanted to follow in his father's footsteps. And he has become one of the top rated stars in the world today. Some even point to Ted DiBiase and say he is destined destined to be the next world's heavyweight champion. Dick Murdoch a driving knee, but right now DiBiase is thinking only one thing, how he can stop this relentless attack on Murdoch. How can he get over to his corner where he has his two capable tag team partners waiting? You can hear the crowd in the background start to chant, go Teddy, go, go Teddy, go. They've grown to like Ted DiBiase. And a neck snapper by Murdoch. And Mad Dog Buzz Sawyer, fresh and eager to continue the attack on DiBiase. Sends him up high, looking for a place to drop him. He found it. And T DiBiase's in a tough spot. We've got two, but no three. As we've seen through the years, and it takes a lot to keep Ted DiBiase down. He is one of those wrestlers who have that strong intestinal fortitude that when the going gets tough, that's when DiBiase gets going. But he couldn't get going when Mad Dog had two fistful of his hair holding him intact. DiBiase now caught in that front headlock. You could see him starting to drive inch by inch towards his corner. He's got Duggan waiting. He's got Steve Dr. Death waiting to tag into the ring if he can get over there. Mass superstar keeping DiBiase down on the mat. A good close-up shot of trying to keep the big DiBiase down because it is extremely difficult to hold on to a man his size when he's on his knees or even worse when he's on his feet. You can see the extended hands of his partners. The tag has been made. Superstar did not see the tag. That was good news for Dr. Dent. The bad news is apparently the referee didn't see the tag either. So Steve Dr. Williams infuriated by the fact that he legally tagged DiBiase. Referee Carl Fergie did not see the tag. And that is bad news for Ted DiBiase, who worked so hard to get over to the corner. We've got two men working over DiBiase. We've got Duggan sending the Mad Dog airborne as once again things start to get out of control despite the hard efforts of the referee. DiBiase now sends the superstar down to the mat as he won right after another starts to pound on the masked head of the superstar. Back in the ring, we've got Murdoch with a chair crashing across the back of the head. The referee now calling for the bell. Dick Murdoch using that steel, that metal chair, 
and now Duggan taking up a page of the book out of Dick Murdoch's book as he decides that maybe if they want to introduce a chair, you better not introduce a chair in the ring while Hacksaw Jim Duggan's around because Hacksaw Jim Duggan knows exactly what to do with that chair in his hand. The bell has sounded, and here's the official verdict of the match. tremendous uproar by the fans of Coliseum. The winners of the match, Hacksaw Jim Duggan, Steve Dr. F. Williams, and Ted DiBiase on a disqualification. We'll be back with more Houston Wrestling action in just one moment. And Doc, you have been lucky. You've held on to the Mid-South Tag Team titles for a little while. You know, you think you're the cock of the walk. You think you're the big shots. Well, you're nothing because I've got the man right here, the mass superstar of the world known. And DiBiase and Doc, I don't have to tell you about me. I don't have the people out here don't have to tell you about me. They know Dick Murdoch. They know that I don't back up from one human being in the world today. So polish up those titles, get them ready. Because there ain't going to be no disqualification. We're coming out to take the belts. We're taking out to become Mid-South Tag Team Champions. And I'll guarantee you one thing. You're going to be in for a rude awakening. Because DiBiase and Doc, you're great athletes. You're great competitors. But we, and I said we, are just that much better. The top. Everybody's gunning for you, so you know what we have to do to protect these belts. Anything and everything we got to do, Doc, and everybody in Mid-South, including you, Murdoch, and Superstar, know that this team's capable of doing it. Murdoch, you've taken enough from me. You tried to take my career away from me, and now you want to take my bread and butter away from me, the Mid-South Tag Team titles. Where well, you're looking at the team of 1986. You know, Murdoch, you cost me a lot, but you taught me a lot, too. I've got pride in myself again. I've got the support of the people again. And we are the Mid-South Tag Team titles. Anything and everything it takes, Murdoch, I'll do to keep these belts. You taught me a lot, Murdoch. Remember that when you step in that ring and face this team. Men, death came to Gino Hernandez. Wrestling fans were shocked at the sudden end to one of the brightest careers in the game. His friends were saddened by an irreplaceable loss of a vibrant young spirit. To his mother and sister, it was a tragedy of indescribable magnitude. Gino started his wrestling career here in Houston within days of his 18th birthday. But that was not the beginning. It was the continuation of a dream that had obsessed him since the death of his stepfather following a match in Tokyo, Japan. It took a lot of hard work to increase his weight and strength to the level he wanted them. But when experience and sweat combined, he received the worldwide recognition he had well earned. But more than that, Gino had a way of attracting friends. He had a way of using his God-given talents to reach out and touch those who had not been blessed. He will be remembered as a fine young athlete who had won many honors but perhaps the greatest accolade will come from those who recall that he helped them just by a word or a touch or perhaps just by being Gino. It's difficult, very difficult to say goodbye to a friend in public. For each of us, grief is a private emotion. What words cannot say we have put into an expression in video prepared here in the studios of Channel 39 by Ed Worthington and we play it on this program because Gino appeared here so many hundreds of times.
youngest guy to ever wrestle in Madison Square Garden at the age of 19. I've been uh, the American heavyweight champion. I've been the world junior heavyweight champion. One half of the world tag team champion. I've, uh, I've been uh, the youngest man to ever wrestle in the arena Mexico in Mexico City. I've um, been the youngest man to hold the American heavyweight title. I won that in Cobo Arena in Detroit, Michigan. I've, uh, I know for a fact that uh, I was one of the youngest wrestlers ever to go toward Japan. And uh, I know for a fact also that I'm the youngest man to ever wrestle the world heavyweight champion. And I think I've accomplished more at the age of 23 in wrestling than most wrestlers accomplish in a lifetime. Showdown between Terry Taylor and Hot Stuff Eddie Gilbert. It's Hot Stuff Eddie Gilbert on top, but only for the two count as Terry Taylor quickly kicks out. And in your background, you saw a quick glimpse of Sir Oliver Humperdinck, the controversial manager of Eddie Hot Stuff Gilbert. As Gilbert now slaps on a reverse chin lock, trying to keep Taylor down on the mat. Roughly 10 minutes have gone by. Your referee for this match is Carl Fergie. My name is Peter Burkholz. And in this match, Terry Taylor was tested by Gilbert, who you've got to make sure you don't sell short because Eddie Gilbert has a good basic scientific wrestling background. In fact, many believe that it's his association with Sir Oliver Humperdinck that has turned him in the wrong direction, but that remains to be seen. Taylor now coming up to his toes as he works his way to increase leverage now in Japanese arm lock, but Gilbert making sure that his manager distracted Carl Fergie long enough, used that long blonde hair of Taylor to bring him back to the mat. Now Terry Taylor will be one of the 24 top stars who will see action this Friday night at the Coliseum on that giant holiday bonanza to celebrate Valentine's Day at the Coliseum. This is the night that you've been hearing so much talk about. This is the night that you will see the steel cage battle if you come down to the Coliseum between the Guerrero brothers and the fabulous ones. It's gonna be this Friday night that you're gonna see Jake the Snake Roberts and his DDT will be legal as he goes after that North American title which has been held up as he faces Dick Slater and if Dark Journey comes to the ringside, she will be searched. It's also the same night that you will see the Mid-South Tag Team title showdown as the champions Ted DiBiase and Steve Dr. Williams battle Dick Murdoch and the mass superstar the sheep herders will be there Terry Taylor will be there Axel Jim Duggan will be there Mad Dog Buzz Sawyer will be there they're all gonna be at the Coliseum this Friday night and that's where you should be to celebrate Valentine's Day well we saw Terry Taylor going airborne over the top rope the referee again was distracted by Sir Oliver Humperdinck Taylor feeling the effects of that crash Ten to the concrete minutes, floor as second minutes. Pat Hatchell hovers over Terry Taylor and that's the man who's been responsible for the distractions that has allowed Eddie Gilbert to break the rules. First he, he bent him a little bit but that time he just went out and broke the rule and now Humperdinck using that opportunity to deliver that punch to Terry Taylor as Carl Fergie starts to issue his warning to Sir Oliver Humperdinck. Again, Gilbert taking advantage of the fact that Fergie, who's had his hands full in this match, is out of position and unable to stop that choke. So Terry Taylor, the debate could go on right now that he's not just wrestling one man, but he's actually battling two men inside the ring. But Taylor has overcome odds before. He is one of the top stars in professional wrestling. A lot of ability, a lot of potential, a great crowd pleaser as they've taken a liking to Taylor for not only his, his personal attitude, but his ability in the ring. They see greatness in Terry Taylor. Right now, Gilbert saw the right fist of Terry Taylor. Fergie now, warning Taylor about the use of fist. You saw how much effect that warning had on Taylor's style as he lowered the boom to Gilbert again. Picks him up and a beautiful backdrop. And now Taylor starting to explode with a style that Houston Wrestling and Mid-South Wrestling fans have grown accustomed to and a style that have grown to love as he continues to pound on Eddie Gilbert. Remember, Terry Taylor will be on that giant card this Friday night at the Coliseum along with 23 other top stars and would like to urge you that there's still plenty of good seats available 
we can't think of a better way of celebrating Valentine's Day than being at the Coliseum with your loved ones, enjoying professional wrestling at its very best. Taylor setting him up, but that time Gilbert used that hot shot of his, a maneuver that has won matches the last few months, his top move, and we've got two, but Taylor saw that wolf, and this is a great demonstration of just how much punishment Terry Taylor can take. He is the only man that we have witnessed so far who's been able to come back from that hot shot. He had presence of mind to find that bottom rope of that boot of his. So Oliver Umperdink is upset. So is Gilbert and Taylor that time. Instead of being thrown on the top rope, he made sure it was Gilbert who went flying to the concrete floor. So Terry Taylor took that hot shot and he's willing to take more. And looks like he's going to have to because Gilbert and Sir Oliver Humperdinck team up one more time. Good move by Taylor to escape. Gilbert had vicious forearm of Taylor. Now that's the move that Terry Taylor uses to win matches. And again, it proves to be successful. Terry Taylor and our great demonstration of ability to take punishment and come back to win the match beats Eddie Gilbert. And he will be on that giant holiday bonanza that we're hoping you, all of you are going to be at the Coliseum. It should be a great night of Houston wrestling action. We're going to do it for you one more time. Now, Chavo was totally embarrassed by the yellow paint that was put all over his body to the fact that he is going to do his talking in the ring and in the cage. He said, make sure to let you know that. Another thing, too, fabulous ones, if you think that this steel cage not hard to feel it if you don't think it's going to be all the way around us you won't be able to run a, run away from us like you did in the mexican death match this this time it's going to be our game in the cage as well as your game because this goes both ways so you think about it because now the cookies are coming down from the jar brother and we're going to see who's going to get it who's going to be victorious and one thing chavo and i said it before and we cannot do away with you, you two gentlemen. We will never come to Houston one more time. Habla español. Yes, sir. Usted es una cosa, todos mis amigos. Ustedes vieron lo que pasaron. Me quisieron lastimar a mí, me lastimaron por una semana. A Chavo lo pintaron de amarillo. Eso, Chavo se quedó muy disgustado. Me dijo, Héctor, nosotros vamos a hablar en la jaula. Habla por la gente, por nosotros. Entonces yo le digo, amigos, como dicen, de tal artilla, tal palo, y de tal cuero, será de cualquier correa. Pero lo que va a pasar, va a ser que una cosa va a ser una cosa. Los fabulosos van a estar contra los guerreros mexicanos hasta su corazón. Si ustedes nos apoyan... Presents, weighing in at 274 pounds from Mongolia, Taras Bova. His opponent, weighing in at 237 pounds, from Tampa, Florida, Al Perez! This side announcer, Cleet Dumpster of the Q Morning Zoo, and you're looking at Al Perez, who's getting ready to face the debuting of Taurus Boba. Your referee is Carl Fergie. My name is Peter Burkholz, and a bell sounds. One fall, 20 minute time limit. Taurus Boba up against Al Perez, and right away, Taurus Boba goes digging into the midsection of Perez. Al Perez is a strong, well-conditioned athlete, but Taurus Boba comes into the Eastern Wrestling Ring with a tremendous reputation for being able to rough and tough his way to the top. That time, Perez with a beautiful drop kick as Taurus Boba a little bit surprised at the quickness of the big Al Perez. Al Perez is a big man, but he possesses that tremendous quickness, which he was able to demonstrate just a few moments ago when he exploded with that drop kick. So we've seen Taurus Boba in television action. This is our first chance of seeing him in action right here in the Coliseum, as he is now managed by Eddie Hot Stuff Gilbert, who is pacing outside the ring here. Eddie Hot Stuff Gilbert wasn't a big crowd favorite before he became a manager. And now that he has taken over the reins of Taurus Boba, Boba tried to land with that guillotine drop, and he has a lot of weight to land with, but he missed, allowing Perez to quickly battle back. 
as he's trying to regain control of this match. Taurus Boba's head into that turnbuckle didn't she seem to shake up Taurus Boba at all. And in fact, now, Taurus Boba is showing just how tough his head really is. Taurus Boba continues to stalk Al Perez, Eddie Hot Stuff Gilbert, shouting out advice. And as Perez, Perez throws a good forearm, but as we've seen in the past few weeks, Taurus Boba is a man who can take a lot of punishment. He's an unorthodox wrestler. This time, that sometimes spells trouble for his opponents. Another driving boot, as we've seen very few wrestling hold by Boba. What we have seen is a man who likes to step inside the ropes and mix it up. Quick reminder that Houston Wrestling does return to the same Houston Coliseum on Friday night, February 28th. Friday, February 28th, Houston Wrestling does return to the same Houston Coliseum. We urge you to stay tuned for more details and urge you to tune us in next weekend because you will see the Rock and Roll Express in action right here on Channel 39 Gold. Be sure to mark it in your calendars as Taurus Boba continues to put the tight squeeze to Perez. Al Perez, a handsome looking grappler. A lot of fans are taking a liking to him. They realize that he may not possess as many years of experience as some of his opponents, but they know that he has got the ability. He's got the capability as he grows stronger and better each match. Carl Fergie is arguing that he hot stuff Gilbert outside the ring as Gilbert trying to distract the referee long enough to allow his man, Taurus Boba, to keep control of Perez. Boba setting up Perez, missing with that elbow. Al Perez comes across with a flying body tackle as he got high in the air and that's exactly how you've got to get to get Taurus Boba down on the mat. He went high in the air sending Taurus Boba to the mat. Now we're seeing the Alfreds we're accustomed to seeing as he becomes fired up in a vicious devastating forearm. Boba caught that forearm and he's back up Stated before, his reputation states that he can take punishment, and he's clearly shown that. We saw it on our side. Andy Hot Stuff Gilbert jerked Perez, and he went to the ropes. And Taurus Boba knows what to do now. He sees Perez down on the mat. We've got a match. We've got a winner. Taurus Boba, clearly with the help of his manager, Andy Hot Stuff Gilbert. So a very unpopular and controversial victory for Taurus Boba and his manager, Eddie Hot Stuff Gilbert. We'll be back for more Houston Wrestling action in just one moment. Now look at here. Excellent Jim Duggan is coming to the ring with his two by four, the Double G Lumber Company. Hello again, everybody. I'm Joel Watts, and you've touched Mid-South Wrestling. Along with Jim Ross, I'll be commentating the action that you'll see in this terrific hour. You'll see the New Zealand Sheep Herders. You'll see Taurus Bulba, Terry Taylor, Jake the Snake Roberts. You'll hear uh, a great announcement from the Superdome uh, just before the opening. You were watching scenes from last week as Hacksaw Jim Duggan made his return to the Mid-South. We'll be talking to him in just a moment. Jim Ross is in the ring standing by. Also today, you're going to be seeing 
uh, Terry Taylor video if we have time, and uh, Coco Beware will be on the program. At this time, let's go to Jim Ross, who's standing by in the ring with Hacksaw Jim Duggan. Ladies and gentlemen, in my opinion, one of the finest athletes and one of the greatest people ever to compete in the squared circle in the Mid-South, Hacksaw Jim Duggan. You know, Jim Ross, seems like I've been gone a long time. Like I said, I went over to Japan, saw the world a little bit, came back, spent a week in Hawaii, got some sun. But I tell you what, I was laying out there on the beach, and I looked over at my buddy, and I said, hey, there's no place like home, there's no place like Mid-South, because this is my home. This is my home, and you folks are my family. Wear one. And like I told Buzz Sawyer, I'm going to tell Dick Murdoch, I'm going to knock on Dickie Slater's head, and I'm going to say it again. There's not a man on the face of this earth that's going to run Jim Duggan out of Mid-South, because one, because as long as there's blood in my heart and air in my lungs, I'll fight Sawyer, Slater, Murdoch, ask anybody. Let's get in one of these folks, and they'll tell you, Hacksaw Jim Duggan has come home. And ladies and gentlemen, let's go back to Joel Watts. Coco Ware is going to be on this exciting program today, and now let's take a look at his video, The Bird by Morris Day. on Coco Ware. It's called The Bird, and we're going to see Coco Beware in action right after this. And with his two by four, as Duggan continues, is exploding feud with Buzz Sawyer. I'm patrolling, Peter. I'm walking back and forth back and forth with my two by four and I want to knock on Buzz Sawyer's head and put him on notice. Sawyer, no matter where you are, no matter where you go, you stick your mangy nose in another match. I don't care if it's Dr. Death, if it's Ted DiBiase, if it's Jake the Snake, who's ever wrestling, if you stick their no your nose in their match, look, look on behind your shoulder, baby. Listen to the crowd. And they're going to tell you, Hacksaw Jim Duggan, Duggan's Lumber Company, the Double G Lumber Company, two by four, it's going to be coming up behind you. See, we got to finish this, Pete. Been going on in Houston wrestling for too long. You and me, Sawyer. So, okay, hey, go ahead. 
Bring that dog collar chain with you to the ring anytime you want. Just remember, just remember one thing, tough guy. Two by four. That's on Jim Duggan. As he's going to be on the huge card Friday, February 28th, Sam Houston Coliseum. Michigan, weighing 260 pounds, Rob Rick Steiner. One fall or 10 minute time limit. Well, he's got everybody dancing and jumping. Morris Day's The Bird brings Coco Beware. And his opponents had better beware. No, well, I started to say no pun intended, but Joel, this young man is really electrifying. His opponent is a double tough young man, the Big Ten champion from the University of Michigan, Rob Ricksteiner. This should be a great test for Coco Ware as Rob Rickstein. You're right, Jim. This should be a great match. Both these men about the same size, about the same quickness. Rob Rickstein with a little bit of edge in the amateur ranks and Coco Beware with the, a little bit of an edge in the professional experience. So this should be an interesting matchup. As we see the collar and elbow tie up, Ricksteiner goes into the headlock. Rick Steiner reminds me a lot of Steve Dr. Death Williams at the sa same stage of, their, of his career. See Coco Ware last week with a very impressive victory here in Mid-South Wrestling, but I think that he stepped up a notch in competition, Joe. This young man, Rob Rick Steiner, has impressed me, and I know you and I have talked about it on many occasions. Uh, he is a talented young athlete with a tremendous future in this profession. He sure is. He's, I'm sure he's, he's scouted Coco. Uh, from last week, and I know he's going to watch out for that drop kick, but Coco hits that thing so quick, there's almost no way he can defense it. He could flat waylay you from just about any position in the ring. Saw some awesome drop kicks in that video of his. Rick Steiner with a football like tackle. Coco where? Well, that's, Rick Coco. Steiner's not going to sprain his ankle landing on his head. That's for darn sure, I'll tell you. Coco Ware is explosive from any position. Sure is. He's quick. I think Rob Rick Steiner is uh, trying to rearrange his strategy here. Coco comes out. The fans are so solidly behind him. He's got the momentum before the bell even rings. The crowd was dancing in the aisles. He's got a great personality, and uh, with the size of this crowd, it's kind of easy to get pumped up. Similar to the six men in basketball, the home court advantage is definitely Coco's on this particular occasion. It certainly is, as Coco Ware ties up that leg. 
He has Rick Steiner in a lot of pain, I'm sure. He's putting a lot of pressure on that knee joint, and that's the one area that every athlete fears. It's the one part of the body. Some people, there's a lot of uh, medical folks have said that the knee uh, it was really not meant for athletics. It just, it, it, no matter how strong you get, it's hard to strengthen up that knee, and, and those ligaments in there are certainly a point of attack if you're really seriously trying to keep an opponent at bay. It's Coco Ware and Rob Bricksteiner, they're jockeying for possession. Coco shows he can use some psychological tactics, but in, in a different kind of way. Coco, deep, deep hip toss there, Joel. Really got his hips in there, and that was what made it so quick, was the leverage that Coco had as he shot his hips through and across uh, perpendicular to Rob Ricksteiner's, and Ricksteiner really hit the mat hard. That's one of the strongest points of the body, Jim, is the hips. Rick Steiner is really trying to manhandle Coco Ware in this corner of the ring. He had been able to uh, out-wrestle him so far, so he's going to the back alley tank. He's using the ropes there. Reverie Carl Fergie doing his best, but those are a couple of big bulls in the ring. I'm sure it's tough to break them up. All you can do is try and count them out. Rick Steiner raking the feet across the forehead of Coco Ware. Body slam. He's He's gaining some momentum on Coco. Certainly is. Rick Steiner from Michigan. He's a very strong, strong young man. And right there is, is evidence of that as he's holding Coco Ware. Oh, he tossed Coco down to the mat. Coco's got to reach down a little bit now. Rick Steiner has really gained the momentum. Coco Ware obviously in great condition. He's known as a fighter. Oh, those elbows, man. He, he forced Rick Steiner to turn loose. As Rick Steiner goes up high. Coco Ware got him up there. Coco showed off a little bit through the bird there. Coco's confidence is so far unshaken. He goes to the second rope. Yeah, man! Oh. Alive! Man! He just about decapitated Rob Rick Steiner as he gets a lateral press and a three count. Now we see the bird. Let's take a look at that in slow motion again if we can. Oh, is that a drop kick? That was devastating. As we listen to Morris Days, the bird. Everybody's dancing, but Rob Ricksteiner. Rob Ricksteiner. He's gonna set this one out. Flat. He's gonna set this one out, Joel. It's Coco Ware. It electrifies this tremendous crowd. Watch this. Jim, I think that says it all. He just flat connected with that one. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be back with more exciting Mid-South Wrestling after this word for the Mid-South Wrestling Network. Out there and he is looking great. He is riding high and he will be here on Friday, February 28th on that huge car that we'll be talking about so much next weekend. You know, I'm looking forward to it. I want to say hello. How you doing? I want to say hello to the fans right here in Houston, Texas. You know, Houston is one of the greatest outstanding wrestling places that you ever want to wrestle. You know, they have the great wrestlers come in here. I mean, you, I don't care where you go in the, in the whole United States, but when you come to Houston, you ask them and you're looking for the best right here in Houston, Texas. I'm, I'm just glad to be a part of it. You know what I mean? And I just want to just say that I will be... Uh, what match is that now? What what time? What date is that? Friday, February 28th. Well, Friday, February the 28th. I'm going to be looking forward to seeing all of my soul sisters and brothers out there because we're going to get down because I love to dance. You know, I, I'm dancing with this song with Mars Day doing the bird, and I'm telling you, I'm going to be dancing all over this Coliseum. So if you're sitting at home, you don't have nothing to do, come on out to the Coliseum because we're going to have a good time right here in Houston, Texas, and I guarantee you, and I can't wait. Coco Ware, Friday, February 28th, Sam Houston Coliseum. A great card is going to be put together. Stay tuned, and don't forget, next weekend, right here on Channel 39, you will see the Rock and Roll Express in action. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing our blue corner, first of all, from Texarkana, Arkansas, weighing 240 pounds, Harry Jackson. And from Pensacola, Florida, weighing 227 pounds, Ricky Gibson.
and introducing in the red corner the combined weight of 482 pounds, the New Zealand Sheep Herders. This match, one fall or 10 minute time limit. Well, ladies and gentlemen, there you see the devastating New Zealand, New Zealand Sheep Herders saluting the New Zealand flag, pledging their allegiance to their country to which I have no problem with the exception, Joel, that they can pledge allegiance to their country all they want as long as they just not use such derogatory remarks about old glory and the United States of America. Well, certainly, Jim. They... Wrestling in the ring is one thing and the nationalism is another and the sheep herders have really been running the America down since they've been here. It's kind of sick. These two, I guess you could describe them as unorthodox, but I think they're just a little bit more than that. They're wily, they're veterans of the ring, and they will stop at nothing to get a victory. No tactic, nothing is, is left out of their repertoire. Well, Joel, they have been the cause of some of the biggest riots in professional wrestling history. I mentioned this on many occasions. I'd like to have just a a penny for every dollar that they've been fined since they've been in this sport. Uh, their suspensions, well, it's, it would fill up a, it'd fill up a, a chapter in a book. Well, it's kind of unusual with them. They, to most people, that would mean a lot. To them, they're just glad they got the opportunity to hurt some people. I'm sure anytime you step into the ring, that's going to be a point of contention, but these two make it their entire modus operandi. Look at this. Once again, Joel, Perry Jackson, who has been devastated, just like last week, they did not allow their, their the other opponent to even get in the ring. The New Zealand Sheep Herders, New Zealand Sheep Herders ladies and gentlemen, a phenomenal team. And Joel, before we went on the air today, I had the opportunity to talk to the New Zealand Sheep Herders. Let's take this time and hear those comments. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, the sheep herders would like to address the fans in the Mid-South, their first public statement since being here. Gentlemen, I understand that you have been champions, tag team champions, in 37 countries. 37 different countries. I also understand, I also understand you've been fined and suspended more than any tag team in wrestling history. Listen, don't worry about the fines. Don't worry about the suspensions. The sheep have been in 37 different countries doing it their way, doing it New Zealand style, doing it the only way that we know how to do it, doing it how well daddy's told us. And now here we are on the invasion tour 1986. Invasion of the Mid-South. Invasion of the USA! We're gonna squash! We're gonna trample! We're gonna destroy every American opponent we can get! Because there's no men in this country! You're looking at the men here! They're gutless! Every yank is gutless! And we're waiting to take the title of them! Those comments from the New Zealand sheep herders. Well, Jim, it's quite obvious that these two men are very anti-American. It's quite obvious that they are gunning for the Mid-South Tag Team titles and anybody else that gets in their way. They are an awesome tag team combination. Veterans of the ring, very good athletes, very vicious. And we'll be back with Taurus Bulba right after this. Wrestling returns to the same Eastern Coliseum. One of the superstars on that card, Mad Dog Buzz Sawyer. I have to warn you because Hacksaw Jim Duggan was out here warning you that wherever you go, you better look behind you. Well, you know, it's just like all the typical Texans here. They're all full of it up to here. When it comes right down to it in the middle of the ring, hey, I was standing back here minding my own business, getting ready for the match. I looked out, here it is Valentine's Day, and what a favor, what a present they had digging down, beating the daylights out of him. 
So being the nice Samaritan that I am, you know, I'm kind of happy about all this. I can tell. I came out there and I took my chain the way they did to you all back a hundred years ago. And I started beating him like the dog he is. And I'm going to keep on beating him and keep on beating him. And you know he's talking about finding me in an alley or finding me outside of Houston or here, anywhere in the country. Well, listen to me. When I was this big, I grew up being the tough guy. And I'm still the tough guy in Texas. And any man walking the face of this green earth who thinks he can handle the mad dog, I'm real easy to find. You stupid people can chant do good all you want, but we know who number one tough guy is, and that's Mad Dog Buzz Sawyer. <laughs> so Mad Dog Buzz Sawyer will be here Friday, February 28th. Stay tuned next weekend for all the details at Huge Card. One match already signed. The Guerreros will battle the fabulous ones inside the steel cage. Eddie Gilbert made quite an impression along with Terrace Bulba on Sir Oliver Humperdinck and shocked the Mid-South television audience. Let's go back in time one week to pick up the action. And now, I'm about to unveil my threefold plan to rid the Mid-South of the likes of Jake the Snake Roberts and Jim Hacksaw Duggan. First of all, the Mongolian is here to take care of people like Perry Jackson. And second of all, he's here to do it. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Second of all, Sir Oliver, is this. <laughs> champion he told me that i could get lost well i was growing up boy my daddy told me don't get mad get even and i have and i've got Taurus bubba well, i guess hot stuff eddie gilbert feels like he gained himself a measure of revenge but i do know one thing for certain he gained himself uh quite a fine athlete in Taurus bulba and now let's go to the ring and see Taurus in action ladies and gentlemen introducing first of all the red corner from mongolia weighing 270 pounds Taurus Bulba. Also, also in his corner, every girl's dream, hot stuff, Eddie Gilbert. And in the blue corner, from Dallas, Texas, weighing 205 pounds, Steve Dahl. This match, one fall or 10 minute time limit. Well, as Eddie Gilbert said last week, Joel, it took him one year to get even. And he did just that because I have not seen Sir Oliver Humperdinck since that incident. And Terrace Bulba, a massive, thick individual, 270 pounds, is one of the most, well, he's really unorthodox because he not only has the martial arts background, he's got a style that's all his own. And I think Eddie Gilbert really has something in this man. Well, he has a low center of gravity, similar to the Nightmare, Buzz Sawyer. He has quickness and he's methodical. He also executes his maneuvers quite well. Steve Dahl was uh, punching away at his midsection right at the onset of the match, and it seemed to not even phase him. He, uh, he apparently has very powerful abdominal muscles and he's, he's tough to move. He's one of those guys that you can, you can hit him with your hardest shoulder smash and you can barely budge him. Very impressive use of the head, the headbutt to the kidney area of Steve Dahl. And this young man from Dallas has been decimated. Whoa, reverse pile driver. Terrace Bulba, ladies and gentlemen, with a reverse pile driver. And this man is quite an athlete as we see hot stuff, Eddie Gilbert, the controversial hot stuff, and we'll be back. Well, ladies and gentlemen, well, at this time, uh, let's take a look again at that uh, at that pile driver, uh, Terrace Bulba. 
tremendous pressure. And that head you just seen, oh, you saw man. Steve Dahl's head just snap as Bobo really planted him. And ladies and gentlemen, we'll be back with Jake the Snake Roberts, a man with a DDT, right after this. For a 10 minute time limit, introducing first in the red corner at 233 pounds from New York City, Broadway, Joe Malcolm. And now entering the ring at 252 pounds from Atlanta, Georgia, the current Mid-South television champion, the man with the DDT, Jake the Snake Roberts. Your referee for this event is Tommy Gilbert. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll hold it right here as Mr. Unpredictable Dick Slater, along with Dark Journey, making their way to the ring. I'm not here to challenge you, Jake Roberts, and I'm also here to challenge you. And I'm not interested in your problems right now. Championships, what you got tied up, I'm telling you right now, you're on notice, both of you. Get out of here. Come on. Some momentum. He saw a victory in his grasp, but Jake the Snake is turning the tables. He's a double tough competitor. And Broadway Joe Malcolm is in a world of hurt. He gets a DDT. Oh man, Jake really delivered at that time. Jake with a very, very quick victory, and now he's straight up, and you know exactly who he has on his mind. Mr. Unpredictable Dick Slater, and listen to this crowd. Jake the Snake Roberts, the TV champion. And we'll be back in just a moment with the mass superstar in action against Brett Wayne Sawyer. Stay with us. Champion and congratulations, Jake the Snake, who defeated Dick Slater right here in the Sam Houston Coliseum, the new North American Heavyweight Champion. You know, it's like a dream come true when you get to the top, you know, because when you start out in any professional sport, you know, you get a lot of promise in your own heart, but there's a lot of people out there who may not believe in you. A lot of people out there might not think you're quite the man to do the job. Well, you know something? I came into Houston Valentine's Day, and I felt like I was ready. And then some guy brings me a newspaper clip. <laughs> Ken Hoffman, 
TV editor. <laughs> you know, sometimes it's better to keep your mouth shut and thought a fool than to speak up and tell everybody what you are. Because, my man, you inspired me. I want to thank you for that. Because whenever I read this, I sure bet that Jake Roberts was not going to be North American champion. You told people to go out and bet the ranch, didn't you? Well, Ken, any of those ranchers that come knocking on my door, my man, I'll send them to you because the real people of Houston know what kind of man I am. And I'm the kind of man that does it my own way. You know, a lot of people have said to me, Jake, we know how you are. There have been a lot of people walk beside me and think they knew who I was. But the whole time, they were walking by a stranger because nobody knows me like I do. And all I can say right now is I'm the happiest man on earth. It's like I said, a dream come true. It's a goal I've had in my mind a long time. And for those that stood behind me and believed in me, good luck. For the rest of you, I really don't care what you think. Jake the Snake Roberts, a new hey, North American hey, heavyweight hey, champion, hey, defeated hey, Dick hey, Slater. Hey. The crowd went crazy. He did it. He knew he could. Hey, the here, new man. North American heavyweight champion, hey, say, Jake the Snake ah. Roberts. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing in the red corner, from parts unknown, weighing 270 pounds, the Mask Superstar. Also in his corner, Captain Redneck, Dick Murdoch. Introducing the blue corner from St. Petersburg, Florida, weighing 220 pounds, Brent Wayne Sawyer. This match, one fall or 10 minute time limit. Your referee, Carl Fergie. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're back here in Mid-South Wrestling. There you see the mass superstar. He will be seconded by the rowdy Texan from Waxahachie, Dick Murdoch, as the superstar goes against the younger brother of Mad Dog Buzz Sawyer, Brett Wayne Sawyer. And Joel, one of the most noticeable things that we need to cover, I think, here at the outset, is that Brett Sawyer is giving away some 50 pounds to the big mass man. But I don't know if that's, I don't think that has intimidated this young man yet. I've never seen him intimidate. I think that runs in the Sawyer family. I'm sure Brett is, uh, is, as long as he's been in the pro ranks, I'm, I'm sure he's got used to uh, going into a match with uh, a weight disadvantage. The thing that strikes me as strange is Dick Murdoch seconding the mass superstar. And we've seen him do it before, but I think it's kind of ridiculous because an international star like the mass superstar certainly doesn't need anybody out there seconding him. I think the situation with Ted DiBiase has got to such a boiling point that Dick Murdoch I think he's afraid to be anywhere where the mass superstar is not. Well, he wants Ted DiBiase to be by himself. He most certainly does. But it's not a reciprocal feeling, quite obviously, uh, and as far as Murdoch is concerned. The mass superstar there pulling the tides of Brett Wayne Sawyer. And, you know, we've talked about matchups and physical abilities and so forth week after week. This is a great example. The superstar pulling the tides of Brett Wayne Sawyer. He pulls it much more, and we may have to go to black here, Joe. <laughs> uh, but Sawyer has got tremendous quickness and speed. There's no doubt about it, and he has to utilize it against this tremendously strong and, and large man. Well, this is a great matchup, and uh, it's quickness and strength against size and, and uh, veteran ability. But again, I have to say, I hate to see Dick Murdoch out there because you always have to consider him a factor, even if he's just a distraction for Brett Sawyer. Remember when the superstar was wrestling Steve Dahl, a fine young competitor from Dallas, Murdoch with a cheap shot on the outside. You know, I got a letter from a fan the other day that uh, was really chastising me because I stated how I felt that Dick Murdoch had really had a change of heart, that I couldn't understand it. Wasn't trying to start an argument, Joel, but I did have to, I think, state my feelings that Murdoch, I think, has gone off the deep end, and his motivation is really uh, hard to, to pinpoint. It's hard to define. Brett Sawyer, great strategy there, Joel. He's got the big man on his back. That's the place to put him. He sure does, with that armbar and twist, he, he 
Could have turned it into a reverse half Nelson. I think he got closer to the pinning predicament, but on the mass superstar, you really have to wear him down a lot more. But look at the action. Brett Sawyer, brother, he is like grease lightning at a high, high drop kick. He got way up there. And he's doing quite well against the mass superstar. He sure is. He's, he's sticking to his game plan, and I got to give him credit for that. Brett Sawyer, but he's looking over his shoulder at every instance, and that may be the deciding factor. Well, that's a distraction. He's thinking about Murdoch, and, and, uh, and how can you think about what you're going to do next in the match if you're sitting there looking at somebody on the outside of the ring? Brett Sawyer going up for the flying head scissors, but he's in the corner. Uh, man, a mass superstar has just turned the tide. There's a knee drop. I thought, it was, I thought the mass superstar was going to try and pin him right there. But Sawyer's fighting back. What a heart. Well, I said I think it runs in the family. Now he does it one more time right across the steel cable. That, Sawyer's hurt. That really sure is. That red uh, tape surrounds the steel cable. That's a deadly weapon. 